Hey guys, what's up? By Sactatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next Fabulous Fails episode. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these, so I wanted to make sure that I give you guys some fails other than just my live attacks, it seems like recently, at least the last live attack um, that I did a few days ago from last weekend's war was a fail. But I want to show you guys some more fails and be able to talk about them after reviewing them and uh, kind of collecting my thoughts on each one and what can be improved. We're going to take a look at quite a few different types of attacks, Town Hall 11 v 11, 10 v 11, 10 v 10, and 9 v 9. So the entire spectrum of your typical war will be covered, and we'll start it right off here with a Town Hall 11 versus 11. Um, going in here is the easiest way to do it. Uh, it's Super Jared against number four, no hard feelings or anything towards anyone in this video. Um, some people like being in the videos, of course, when I show the, the nice attacks they do, but there also is the downside of being in the video for something you did kind of bad. Uh, but a lot of these actually are good attempts and I think are, are good examples in general. So let me pause this for a second so I can explain what's going on here. Um, basically, on this base, He's try because there's a Lava Hound in the CC, he's trying to use his Queen just to hop in there and grab an Inferno Tower. He's not going to get that value because that Golem's going down so early and it's going to take the Queen quite a while to get through these storages and stuff that by the time she actually enters the base, the Golem already explodes. He needed to take a little bit more of a chance. Now, the way he did it like this, you know, the funneling's good. The queen has nowhere to go but into the uh, into that compartment as soon as he drops those wall breakers, which he does right here. But he needed to take it a little bit riskier and try to enter a little bit more towards the corner. That way, there'd be something to still tank if he's able to drop that golem later. I think he also could have dropped the queen on like one or two buildings before she was in range of anything. So that way, he wouldn't have to drop the golem. He could delay it a little bit until she was about to step in range, then drop the golem. But the way he did it, it was just so... Um, so delayed from the time he dropped that golem to the time his queen entered the base and because of that he doesn't get the inferno now right here i'm not sure if the warden was needed it's tough to say because the warden's ability definitely helps those bowlers right there um the bowlers don't get a ton of value to be honest they kind of go off to the side here get a few teslas i think he could have just done the king and maybe a few valks or something um, bowlers are typically not good in small numbers, especially against an Inferno, because the Inferno can target, you know, up to four bowlers along with the King there. So I think it would have been better to use the Warden with the balloons here, bring a few less balloons, invest a little bit more in troop space in terms of some Valks to help the King get that same value that he got there. Because right here, having the Warden on ground also makes it get, get caught up on the Lava Hound. So while the Warden's doing the Lava Hound, uh, the balloons are kind of getting fragged out here. And actually it was pretty close. He got through that um, core of the base quickly. Surprisingly, he gets through all four air defenses, which is tough when you have these air defenses that are smack in the middle of the base. But he does a good job using the haste to propel them through. But look what's up. The stuff the Queen didn't get. Um, so the main adjustment probably would have been to, uh, to find a way to get that queen in for cheaper value and not have to waste the entire golem just to get the funneling for her to step up and enter the base there. But a good plan, I think, you know, considering what he was working with, it was a very good idea and actually almost worked had it not been for just a few defenses in the bottom there still up towards the end of the attack. So we'll fast forward to the end here. Nice try to Super Jared and we'll move on to a 10 v 11. Okie dokie. So I think it's, let me check here. Yeah, nine versus one. Um, okay, the uh, implicated party is going to be JC and a great uh, setup on this one in terms of getting the percentage because when you're doing a Town Hall 11 attack, the two things you're thinking about are percentage and the Town Hall. And you have it's a balance. How much am I going to invest for percentage? How much am I going to invest for the town hall? Right away, don't do this, guys. He drops the queen so close that she's immediately targeted by two-point defense. That's a, a terrible thing to do. It just makes her need that rage sooner. If he just dropped her a tile or two back, she'd still take out the same buildings and still path in the same direction. 
but she wouldn't be targeted quite so soon. So that rage might not have been needed at all right there. So drop the queen far enough back if you can, unless there's like a reason not to, like her pathing will get screwed up. But in that situation, it didn't matter. He could have dropped her a few tiles back and had not um, been required to use that rage most likely. If she doesn't step up uh, for another five or 10 seconds, than the initial placement that he chose. But regardless, she still gets some awesome value on this walk here. Pops the ability, um, I think he'll drop in some wall breakers in just a moment. There's the rage, and this was so lucky. All five Inferno streams lock on to the five healers when he pops the ability. So the queen is not targeted by that Inferno even though she's in range because those healers are tanking it. Um, pretty incredible how that worked out. Now the downside is the healers are going to die right here, but actually has the freeze and actually the healers are still up surprisingly. So the percentage is great. The problem is the town hall dive. The way the compartments are uh, structured here, they're kind of going, I guess you could say parallel to the town hall. It's, it's separating some bowlers, forcing them to go out towards that wizard tower he needed to create the funnel a little bit better and force more bowlers to the town hall because you can see some of them do go up to it, but it's too late. He also could have started them a little bit earlier, so the entire Queen Inferno encounter was taking place at the same time. That way, these defenses wouldn't be available to take out all his bowlers, but he's very close. I think just a few adjustments in terms of maybe not uh, dropping the queen so close to the initial two point defense that would have saved a spell most likely um, for his bowlers later on. And also just doing a little bit of a better job on the funnel there, forcing the, bo the bowlers towards the town hall because even if the jump spell technically is in the right place to lead them there, you gotta think about the pathing and what direction they're gonna be forced, especially with the, uh, the weird compartments and how they're set up in those little, um, little grid like uh, formations there which can be tough for bowlers um, in terms of pathing so nice try to um, forgot the name um, but anyway let's take a look at a what are we at town hall 10 v 10 now uh, 8 versus 11 this is um, I believe this is smog I think that's the uh, the, the the original name of this of this person that's his original Clash of Clans name on the uh, N G H I A uh, peace sign account. So Smog here coming with the Bowler Witch attack and one thing he's doing which is pretty nice is dropping down a few bowlers around the outside. Um, typically that's a good way just to grab a few mortars and get some good second bounces there with the bowlers. So typically a good investment. My main issue with this attack was, and this is something in general that I think is a weakness of the bowler witch attack. I think personally, you got to choose a side to commit to because the idea is that you have some troops go to the middle and some go to the outside and the troops going to the outside kind of take out the, uh, the outer flanks of the base. I personally think that um, this was a good attack, first of all. He actually gets pretty deep into the base with his uh, his main force going up the gut. But my main issue was he his troops were too spread out. I think he had to commit to either dropping his main force of witches and bowlers on one of the sides. The force going up the gut was perfect. You can see it gets the infernos. It gets everything he wanted. But look at each side. There's one witch on the top side and basically the same thing, one witch on the bottom. He needed to basically invest more in one side and getting that taken out. Now, of course, that's going to leave a few more defenses on the side he doesn't uh, invest in. But the end game strategy is to have these witches still be up towards the end when there's no splash damage. And take a look, no splash damage at the bottom of the space. He needed to invest all his troops in one bunch. That way they tank for each other. They're going to stay up longer and those witches keep regenerating. So it wouldn't have mattered if they um, if there's a few defenses left up on one side of the base. If the troops are together, specifically those witches, they can just roll through the base. But the problem is when you spread them out on two different sides, if the groups aren't big enough, they'll get taken out. And you can see that's what happened here. Uh, eventually there's only one witch up on each side by the time they came around the base. And as a result, they get taken out and there's nothing to get that last little bit. So I think you have to, on those witch bowler attacks, commit to one side of your troops walking and just funnel the other side normally and not use, uh, not use the witch uh, bowler uh, tandem along the outside on one of the sides 
of, uh, of your main force, if that makes sense. Um, let's take a look at one more Town Hall 10. This is a 12 versus 7, the guilty party being Oas. Um, let's see, what was this attack? This is a Town Hall 11, actually, but has all the Town Hall 10 stuff. Wink, wink, towards the uh, the difficulty of this war. Um, kind of the, uh, the way their bases were designed in terms of the upgrading uh, was... A little bit of a challenge, but we got the victory uh, despite that. So good job to the uh, the Genesisians. Uh, but for Oas here, I think this was a solid attack. I'm trying to remember uh, why I chose this one. See if it'll come back to me. Oh yeah, this was actually a great adjustment because the way I saw it, I'm pretty sure he wanted his queen to head south and kind of maybe wall breaker her in on the bottom there by the archer tower at six o'clock. But and I, I'm not sure. I, I haven't asked him about this, but from what I've seen, this was not planned, the queen to go this direction, but he makes it look so smooth. The adjustment was perfect, and it was almost better, maybe, that his queen went this direction. The problem is he's not he's not ready to funnel um, his troops into the base here. He hasn't thought about that. He hasn't brought the necessary troops, so he drops the king, and there's nothing on that army camp. That wizard might have been a good idea, but there was an archer tower guarding it. Something to funnel the king into the base because if the king goes in, this might have been a three star. It actually almost was a three star despite that. The king not going to get much value just walking around the outside, always getting his trash buildings. But the queen does go in and uh, she actually is in a perfect position right here to take out the CC and then step up for the inferno and the defensive queen. I like the early ability. Sometimes it's a better idea to do that instead of wait to the last minute. It just seems to get the job done with and over with that way, especially when your queen's going on a walk. That way you don't have to uh, to worry about her getting low and potentially some kind of uh, giant bomb going off, taking her out, something like that. Now look at this. He swags his freeze by accident, drops it in the dirt there. So basically a wasted freeze as well. Um, how many more things can go wrong in this attack? Yet despite that, the deployment is good on everything. I'm not sure if this was how he was even going to deploy his balloons. This might have all been planned, but to me it didn't look like it from how he initially tried to funnel his queen towards the bottom there. Um, and then just dropping in these haste spells. Had he had that freeze, there'd be a few more balloons left up, so I think it would have been uh, a little bit closer here. But towards the end, you can see just things start to peter out. Nothing for that air defense. Uh, the balloons will close in, but not quite in time. And the warden actually does quite a bit of damage to those balloons. Uh, level 11 warden is pretty solid against them. So the queen is still going to be up, but uh, that's pretty much it besides a few pops and some wizards and stuff. So not enough to get the job done, but I wanted to show this mainly because it was an awesome example of adjustment and just how, you know, a funneling mistake can lead to the uh, to the downfall of an attack. But it was a very good adjustment and I think uh, a, a good plan to possibly expand down. I'm not sure if we ended up three-starring that base or not. Um, so let's move on to some Town Hall 9 action, starting with 16 versus 17. Uh, right away, I have to um, give a disclaimer. This uh, clan had a lot of Town Hall 9.5s, not a lot of good Town Hall 9 bases. So um, we're going to take a look at one 9.5, which is pretty much a max Town Hall 9. You can think of it that way uh, with like a few new defenses which make it just a little bit harder. And uh, the second one is gonna be a little bit of a lower level, an example of what their actual Town Hall 9s were like. But regardless, Living Pro here, this one was interesting. I think, I don't know, the queen gets like mediocre value here. I'm not sure if it was worth it to send her in, maybe just send in a few Valks with the king and get that same compartment taken out. Cause right here, it seems like the queen is almost wasted because that Lava Hound just, uh, just occupies her for the rest of the rest of her lifespan. Maybe sending the queen in somewhere else and just investing a few more troops. He could have gotten an extra air defense taken out like that one at the bottom there. If he just dropped the queen somewhere around here by these buildings and uh, got that air defense in like the Archer Tower or something. I don't know, maybe maybe that was a, a good plan, sending both in at the same spot. But um, another problem here <clears throat> is the uh, that first Lava Hound runs over to the wrong air defense. It runs up to this one after it goes through the initial air defense there. That's not helpful. Uh, the Skeleton Spill, I believe he had one, goes down the Queen. She goes down uh, with the help of, or no, maybe she doesn't go down. 
yeah, I don't think she does go down. Typically, it's tough because it's hard to know whether the skeleton spell is going to take the queen out or not. Because if there's a local air defense near her, the idea is that the lava hound will, will tank. But sometimes it just doesn't work out. Now, another thing I want to point out is you can see the mortar, the cannon here. Uh, the disc was right there. Oftentimes, people don't drop balloons on those because they're not defensive targeting. But the reason you should, or not air targeting, sorry, the reason you should drop balloons on those types of defenses is for the funneling of the balloons already in the base. His balloons had to go on a major detour to go all the way around the outside to take those out. Now, he does get all the defenses taken out, not the queen granted. But um, in general, I think it's a good idea, even if it's mortars or cannons or something not important directly to your air attack, for the sake of funneling and balloon pathing, drop those, but like one balloon on those defenses as you work your way around the base, either clockwise or counterclockwise in your deployment, drop those balloons on those defenses to keep your main group inside the base and stop them from taking a detour towards the outside. Even though you're not actually taking out any DPS, it's still worth it in terms of pathing, especially for only one balloon uh, investment there. So nice try, a few things, hard to know what would have made that attack go right but I believe that base was three-starred in the end. And uh, finally, 17 versus 23, and I feel bad about it. I'm 99%, but it's going on the channel to Dirty Dancing. I also feel bad. This is like a second um, regret, is that she also lets me use her, uh, her account occasionally for Town Hall 9 base builds. So I am kind of doing her dirty in a way, uh, no pun intended to the name of the account. Um, by showing this one, it was a, a heartbreaking 99% attack, and it just it happens. I'm going to make a point towards the end of this attack. But you can see here, she drops down the uh, the baby dragon for the funnel. The skeleton spell, I don't know. I know he or she wanted to take out the queen, but one skeleton spell, even if there's not a whole lot of immediate splash damage, is not going to be enough, even with the poison on the queen. It probably would have taken two, maybe some giants to tank right before she drops the skeleton spell, put down some giants, um, something along those lines. Otherwise, in the alternative, maybe wait for the balloons to come around, and as they're approaching like this air defense down here, then drop the skeleton spell when everything's being tanked. Uh, a few different choices there, but it didn't work out the way it was executed. Uh, regardless, the queen coming through, this is an awesome queen charge. Uh, perfect little entry point through that uh, tunnel there, that little gap in the base. Drops the rage down, she'll step up and take out some of these defenses and get the king. Other stuff, you can see this base pretty low level. And that's kind of my next point. So if you're going against a base that's low level like this, that has these air defenses, one not being maxed, has the low level wizard towers, the... Uh, the archer towers, all that stuff, do not run out of time because you know that you're going to to most likely crush the base. The worst thing you can do is delay certain deployments and run out of time. Even if you send stuff in a little bit too early, it's definitely still worth it because you have some room for error with the, the low-level base. So what happens here is... The, uh, the deployment's a little bit funky just by how this base is set up and a few unlucky pathing situations for the balloons. But um, beyond that, just, I don't know. It seems like things go really quickly once all her troops are down, but it took quite a while um, towards the last minute and a half to really get the balloons and stuff down. And because of that, she just runs out of time and had just things gone in a little bit quicker, had the king been down quicker, had these minions been down quicker, it would have been a three star for sure because you can see how many troops despite some of these hiccups are still left up. You got to just get that stuff going sooner and I know it's easier said than done, you know, in hindsight, but um, on these lower level bases guys in general, Make sure to get your troops down early because the worst thing that can happen is you go against a base like this and there's that storage. Yeah, I mean, literally a second or two from going down. Uh, so nice, nice try to Dirty Dancing. Nothing against her. It was a good plan. She also got a different three star. So she was one for two this war. Uh, solid stuff. A good Town Hall 9 attacker in general. 
But um, like I said, do not run out of time on these low-level Town Hall 9 bases because I know they are common in these farming wars. Or not farming wars, but just random searches against certain clans. So anyway, that is it, guys. Um, some very uh, interesting fails from this war. Uh, but a good war to Genesis, getting the victory despite a Town Hall disadvantage. And surprisingly, we're actually against a... Another one of these clans that has a lot of Town Hall 9.5s and 10.5s uh, right now. So I'll try to record maybe a live attack or some live on War Day uh, attacks from other people if you guys want to see that. And uh, that should be interesting. But we'll see how this war shapes up. And we're getting ready for our next CWO matchup against Invictus Prime. Should be a competitive war. They're a top clan. And we're looking to, uh, to deal them. I believe their first loss it would be. I believe they are 3-0. So anyway, enough talk about that. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, Sectatron out.